All right, guys. So, very good morning. Very good evening. Um, welcome to this Oracle administration workshop. Okay. Uh, first thing, um, you are free to unmute yourself if you have any questions, queries while I'm covering the topics. And then you can ask any questions or you can post any questions. Uh, and then also chat box is opened. So, you can always... Uh, or in the middle of the course or while explaining. If you have any doubts or concerns, you can always ping here in the chat as well. Right, uh, having said that, uh, straight to the point, uh, I'll just quickly introduce about myself. Uh, I'm having around 13 years of experience in this Oracle domain. Uh, Oracle is my primary domain. Um, I worked on various Oracle products starting with Oracle 9i, Oracle 10G, 11G, and Oracle 19C, and Oracle Color Recent 121C. And then along with that, I'm expertized in Oracle uh, Exadata, and I've certified it in Exadata Administration, and also I'm certified in Oracle EBS application. And also I worked on Oracle OBI, and uh, Oracle PeopleSoft. Uh, basically, the point here is I'm a Oracle domain expert. Uh, I worked on various organizations, starting with iGate and followed by uh, Oracle Corporation and then Exa group of companies and then uh, currently working in Rubrik. And then I worked on a various roles, starting with a software engineer, and senior software engineer, lead engineer, and then infrastructure lead. Uh, and then coming to the major accomplishment in my career was, uh, I worked on one customer where we built entire data center for them, starting from the scratch, starting with the design implementation, coordinating with the network team. And you know, that is one of the my, my major project I worked in my career. And the other major project is uh, for one of the customer, we did a complete data center migration, data center migration from New Jersey to Washington DC. So their existing data center was in uh, New Jersey and then we migrated uh, the thousands or hundreds of databases, thousands of uh, servers from New Jersey to Washington DC. Again, that is an exact platform. And uh, these are two major projects what we implemented uh, in my career. Along with that, there are so many tasks like, you know, rack implementation, data guard implementation, golden gate implementation. Uh, those are like, you know, minor tasks, I can say. Uh, uh, that's a pretty much about me. Um, and then coming to this particular course, uh, this database administration workshop is purely formed based upon the real time exper experience, whatever I have it. I pick up the topic which are really needed for a DBA, for any organization he is working as a DBA, what are the day-to-day -day activities as a DBA will be handling, everything will be covered in this particular course, right? So this is not something that, you know, theory part and then just explain and then- uh, Good morning, sir. Yes, please. Uh, you have any questions? All right, sorry for that. Uh, yeah, uh, this particular course is formed based upon the real-time experience and as a DBA, what are needed uh, literally to do day in and day out activities, right? Everything is listed out and then this particular four course is formed. That's a one thing. And the second point is uh, this particular course, it's not something that, you know, we'll just explain the theory part and then we can complete the, we can rush to complete the course. It's not something like that. So this is like a real-time support where each and every student who are attending this course will be executing and each and every lab exercise. And then we'll be discussing end-to-end -end based upon the real-time examples, right? So that's where, you know, I used to call this course as a database administration workshop so that, you know, you can ask any questions and then we can interact more and more. And then whatever the course curriculum or course content is formed, that is not limited to that, the course content. If you are willing to learn some more advanced or extra topics, we are open. 
and then I'm happy to include in part of course curriculum and then we can cover those extra topics as well. So that's not restricted to that, whatever the course curriculum mentioned over there. Right, so that's all about me and then the course, right? And then few important factors of the frequently the people ping me on my WhatsApp and Telegram and then they'll ask who can learn or who can enroll this particular course, right? So as I said, this course contains from the scratch till advanced level. And if you are a beginner, wanted to start your career in database field or Oracle domain, you are happy to welcome here because we are going to cover from the scratch till advanced level. So you are new and wanted to enter into database domain, you can pretty much enroll for this course, right? And then you are already having experience. You may have five years, 10 years of experience, doesn't matter. And you can still enroll this course because we're going to cover end to end each and every concept of, you know, entire database. And then again, one important fact I already told this particular course is not like a regular course who can other vendors or like other institute can offer this particular course content. If you can go ahead and check it out, the course content, this course content is formed purely based upon the real time exposure, like whatever experience I have it in this IT world based upon that, I pretty much form this particular course. And on top of that, as I said, like we are happy to include any other topics which you are willing to learn. For example, encryption. You wanted to learn about wallet and encryption. And that's advanced topics. So, you know, we're happy to cover that as part of this course. That's a one important aspect about this. And then other important aspect about enrolling my course is it's a one-time registration fees, guys. And then you can long-term partnership with me. You can, after this course, you can regularly ask any questions, queries, and you know I'm happy to help on that, right? That's how you know uh, I'm gonna support for each and every one who are willing to learn. Right, so that's about uh, course content about me and then importance about this course. And uh, you can pretty much go to my blog and then check it about the course content. We'll start with the environment we're gonna start the building environment from the scratch. How we're gonna install the Linux, how we're gonna install the database, how we're gonna create the database, how we're gonna install the softwares. All those things will be covered as part of this environmental setup. And they will be covering some of the understanding of Linux and the networking because that's very much needed as a DBA, you need to understand Linux and the networking. We're gonna cover that Linux and networking before we get started into the course. And then we'll start with the installation of various versions, right? We'll start with the uh, 19C is the one hour focus. We're gonna pretty much talk about 19C and then we'll practice on 19C. But I'm gonna give you some slides and some comparison between 11C, 12C, 19C, and even 21C. What are the differences while come to installation or the upgradation and all those things, right? We'll download the software and we'll install it and again, installation, various method, GUI method, silent mode method, using the response files, all those things will be like discussed. And then creation of your databases, right? Once you install the software, you're gonna create a database, various method again, manual method, GUI method, and with the response file. So all will be covered. And then we'll start with the architecture part. So architecture part is a backbone for any DBS. So once you understand architecture clearly, and you can pick up any topic. You can grasp any topic in Oracle domain. Architecture is very, very mandatory and very, very common questions in most of the interview. And one of the common question they will ask, can you brief me about database architecture? Can you explain about database architecture? And then they will give a pen and paper. They'll ask, okay, can you draw a simple database architecture? And as a DBA, you should be able to draw database architecture and you should be able to explain database architecture flawlessly without any issue that's kind of a backbone 
and even in the middle of the night somebody wake you up and then ask you what you did with architecture can you brief you should be able to explain it that's how you should be thorough with architecture once you understand the database architecture rest all is like nothing you can easily grasp each and every concept so architecture is the main part will be covering end to end on that architecture including container database pdbs and cdbs and what are the differences in the architecture part with 11g 12c 19c we'll just give a comparison and then uh, that's a backbone right so that's we're going to give a most importance on that and then followed by regular database admin activities managing your memory sga pga managing your storage structure your redo logs control file data files and archive log files stem files and password files your sp file p file and then how we're going to start up and shut down your database everything will be like covered here and then followed by internal understanding of your data files your table spaces and your segments your extent your block size and then what happens if somebody do insert into table if they insert one record how that insert statement is going and writing into my data file how the data files are mapped into segments extent and then how that extents are mapped to my data blocks how the data blocks are mapped to my os blocks how the data is going to write into my os disk so all those internal concept will be covered over here along with that what happens if somebody do select query what happens if somebody do update query what happens if somebody do insert query uh, again common interview questions right can you explain me about select query how it going to process right so it's going to go on various phases followed by memory followed by your background processes and writing into your disk and then fetching the result from the disk putting into memory and then giving it back to the end user so all those things uh, how that execution plans how that sql id will get generated how that soft parsing hard parsing uh, all those concept will come into picture everything will be covered when we are explaining about internal in depth concept about a storage structure inside my database and then followed by again asm very very brilliant future and oracle strongly recommends to use asm whether it's a stand alone and whether it's a rack always go ahead with the asm as your storage right so we'll be covering the differences between the installation what how the installation goes if you use asm storage how the installation goes if you use a file system local storage and then asm is going to be one of the major activities whether it comes to rack or whether it comes to stand alone or whether it comes to oracle restarts so you have to install asm software first you have to create asm instance first and then you have to create a different various disk groups inside your asm storage your data disk group record disk group fra disk group you have to create a various disk groups and then we'll start with the understanding of asm architecture once we understand asm architecture how we are going to manage my storage all my disk groups with the various redundancy right high redundancy normal redundancy and external redundancy how i'm going to add a disk into my disk group how i'm going to drop a disk into my disk group how i'm going to create a different disk groups with a different uh, uh, mirroring all those uh, architecture plus uh, all those whatever the admin activities will be covered as part of this asm architecture and administration and followed by very very important concept again multi tenant that is going to be future focus from the oracle side and guys one more thing important about multi tenant is till 19c we have a option to create a database either a normal database or the multi tenant database starting with the 21c you don't have a option to create a normal database by default whatever database you create it is going to be cdbs and pdbs that is going to be multi tenant architecture there is no option at all oracle strongly forcing each and every one to you know migrate your database to cdbs and pdbs 21c onwards there is no normal database concept everything is going to be container database cdbs and pdbs so for a dbs getting hands on on this container database and working on this pdbs and cdbs are very very important we will be covering each and every end to end point on the cdbs and pdbs and then we'll be 
covering and administration part, how we can manage your CDBs and PDBs, especially when it comes to backups, restore recoveries, and when it comes to export and import. And then how are my PDBs are going to be handled when it comes to P file and SP file? All those like concepts will be covered here as part of the PDBs and CDBs. Sir, right. this uh, concept comes under uh, multi-tenant. What, come again? Root and seed. Ah, something everything called. will be, yeah, everything will be as multi tenant architecture. Your root CDB, oh. container CDB, and your PDBs, and PDB ah, dollar seeds, yes, and root oh, dollar, like all those are concept of your multi tenant. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Malik. This is Srinivas. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you said like uh, in multi tenant uh, architecture is uh, mandatory in 19. So is it mandatory or uh, it's uh, optional? In nine, not in 19C. 19C, we have options whether you can create a database as a normal database or you can create a database as a multi tenant database. Till 19C, you have that option while creating a database. But in 21C, you don't have option. Default, whatever database you create, it's going to be multi tenant database. Okay. And 21C. Okay. Yeah. So that is the Oracle focus. Oracle is strongly fixing or recommending all of is customer to use this multi-tenant architecture. So, so that means like in 21C, like we should have CDB and PDB, right? Uh, there is no like uh, standalone database. Right? No normal database concept. All are like CDBs and PDBs in 21C onwards. Thank you. Right. And then we'll start with the networking. Again, very, very, generic a lot of questions queries a lot of issues regularly as a dba we interact with our developers or the application users or the end users my tns is not connecting my listeners are not resolving my name listener cannot identify the service name and my password expired my connection is not establishing jdbc connection odbc connection my tns connections all those things will be covered as part of this networking. So we'll understand with the configuring a listener, TNS, and why we need a listener, why we need a TNS, way to configure these listeners and TNS on the Oracle server side or on the client side. And what is the importance of this listener file and TNS file? What is TNS admin directory? What it contains? And what is this SQL net data file? And then how I can connect my database using a toad? How I can connect my database using my SQL developer. And then once I start my listener, services are kind of a blocked or services are kind of a unknown. Services are kind of a ready state or services are kind of a, a you know, various state blocked or upgraded or, you know, migration mode. Why these all different uh, service states in my listener and why users are getting that listener unknown services. All those things will be like, discussed and practically shown each and uh, every concept here because this is going to be one of the daily activity, daily challenges for the uh, many DBS, right? So we'll cover that as part of this networking. And users and roles. So creating a users. So regular request, right? I have a user A, can you replicate the same privileges of user A to user B? How I can get, get that user credentials? How I can get that user privileges of A, replicate same the privileges on user B, and how I can assign the role, how I can assign the object privileges, how I can assign the system privileges, and then how I can manage those users like profiles, quota, and then how I can create a user, how I can drop a user, how I can modify the users, and some of the common activities in a DBA life or DBA day to day activities, my password expired, my account locked and user hitting a wrong password, account getting locked, and user may forget his database account password, and we need to reset the password. And some user will newly add it to the development team, and we'll get a request, can you create a user B similar to user A? We need to verify what all privileges are available on user A, replicate the same thing to user B. All those things will be like covered in as part of that user management, right? Quotas and privileges and roles, and all those things, what are the best practices? Everything will be covered here. And then backups and recovery, one of the 
backbone for DBAs, I can say, because backups and recoveries are going to be very, very strong. You have, as a DBA, we have to set up a strong backups and recovery uh, strategy for my database so that any case my database crashes, disaster scenario comes, my production database went down, crashed, and as a DBA, I should be able to bring my database back as soon as possible with the help of my backup strategy. You have to set up a backup strategy. How are you going to take a production database backup? Level zero backup, level one backup. Weekend, I'm going to take a full backup. Weekdays, I'm going to take level one backup. And then regularly, I can take an archaeolog backup. So anything goes wrong, I can restore back my production database. That is kind of a business continuity plan. Anything goes wrong with your production data center or production database, my backup strategy will decide whether I'm able to recover my database or not, how much data I'm going to lose or whether I'm going to recover my entire database till the point of failure. That is decided by my backup strategy. So we'll understand basic concept of backup and recovery strategy. What are the various backups? Earlier days, we used to have something called cold backup, offline backup, or user managed backups. And then we, now Oracle is strongly recommending us to use Armin backup. Armin is a, one of the brilliant intelligent tool provided by Oracle. We'll make use of this Armin tool to handle these backups and recoveries. So we'll understand uh, various old uh, traditional backups, cold backups, hot backups, and user managed backups versus my RMN backups. And then we'll take a different backups of my control file backup, SP file backup, auto backup, and level zero backup, level one backup, full database backup, and archaeolog backup. And combining all these backups, how I'm going to do a restore and recovery of various my data files, recovery of my tables, recovery of my table space, recovery of my data files, recovery of my system data files, stock data files, uh, all those uh, data file recoveries and versus cloning my database. So again, cloning is going to be one of the common activities in most of the organization. Your developer will come, okay, my UAT database need to be refreshed with the latest production backup or the last week production backup or last month production backup. They will call it as a database refresh or create a new database, or can you uh, refresh my development database? Can you refresh my UAT database? Can you clone production database as a development database? They will all call it as a various names, like refresh, clone, or create a new database, whatever, whatever it is. So the moment they give the date and time or which date they want, we can use that particular date backup of my production database, and then we can clone it on my lower environment. It may be your development or test or UAT. We're going to clone it over there. So we're going to see various methods of this cloning techniques. There are like various methods to clone or refresh your development database or UAT database from the production database. So that will be covered here. What are the various methods? The restore, recover versus clone and RMN duplicate command, RMN duplicate with active database duplication or the backup based duplication. All will be covered here as part of RMN. Again, along with that, we'll be covered with some of the, uh, you know, improvement, right? Like how I'm going to improve my RMN backups and recovery speed by increasing the channels, by using uh, blockchain tracking. Uh, what are like how, one of the common questions, right? My RMN backup used to run for one hour, today it is running for three hours. And how I can troubleshoot, what are the logs I can check? What are the aspects I need to troubleshoot? All those will be explained as a example with the real time word. And then followed by patching. Again, guys, patching is going to be, uh, you know, one of the killing process for DBS. If you don't understand the patching, and then you're going to end up with corrupting your entire database. What I mean, as we know, Oracle will release quarterly patches. You know, like Oracle will release Q1, Q1, Q2, and then Q3. And then Q4, four times Oracle will release the security patches. That will be typically Jan and then April and then uh, July and then October. These are the four quarters Oracle will release these patches for all the versions. You were, uh, now right now 11G is the end of support. They won't release any patches. Right now 19C 
and 21c they started releasing patches for 21c 19c and some of the 12c databases as a dba we have to regularly patch our uh, you know uh, databases whether it's a 19c or 21c as one of the best practice we have to patch our endowment with these regular patches it is left to you whether you are going to apply all four quarter patches or i'm going to apply only two quarter jan and july or i'm going to do only one time in a year i'm going to apply only january patches every year so yeah it is left to you you can decide that what patching strategy you want to do but it is a best practice we need to apply these patches on regularly advantages about that is it going to fix a lot of security bugs and then it the patches includes lot of future enhancements lot of perform query performance improvements so it is always recommended to apply these patches at least once in a year right and then the moment you apply the patch on your asm home and oracle home and inside database so three levels we are going to apply these patches and asm home and your oracle home and once you apply on asm and oracle home and on database level you are going to run the data patch so three layer the each patch one single patch you want to apply you have to apply it on the three layers on asm home oracle home and at the database level so again there are various method to apply these patches uh, like you know using opatch or opatch at all and then uh, n apply and apply and then how i can minimize the downtime for this patching so all will be discussed here and if you mess up with this patching your entire database will be the gone entire like downtime and then to recover that you have to spend your day and night so the precautions is better than uh, you know starting and fixing the issues right so we are going to cover end to end on the patching we are going to show a live demo on the patching of uh, various your gi home and database home and then the database and a lot of uh, uh, you know failure scenarios will be discussed over here and again upgradation is going to be one of the common activities now because 11g is end of support and 12c is going to be end of support very soon so all the customer has to upgrade their database to at least 19c and then if not 21c so we're going to see the various methods of database upgrades manual method gui method and there's a 19c auto upgrade there's automatic tool and the command line upgrade cat upgrade.sql and there's a perl script you can run the perl script and do database upgrade and there's a cell script you can run the cell script and do a database upgrade there are like six to seven ways of database upgradation we'll be covering few of them like you know we'll be explaining all of those six to eight six seven oh, sorry six to seven database upgrade methods and then we'll be showing a demo on like each one of them or like how we're going to do manual how we're going to do dbv gui mode how you're going to use like 19c auto upgrade and then how we are going to do that manual sql command prompt cat upgrade that sql how you're going to use the perl script how you're going to use the cell script all these things will be like discussed and then what are the pre checks what are the post checks everything will be like covered here as part of the database upgrade so as a dba it's a time for each and every one of us to understand this upgrade process and then practice it because your 11g is the end of support 12c is going to be very soon end of support so most of the customer are in 12c now so they have all to migrate to 19c they have to upgrade their database to 19c right so this is one of the uh, not regular activities but going to be common activity now right and then followed by data guard again one of the backbone for disaster recoveries right you have a two site production and database like production database here standby database here production database is in new york and your standby database in london and your entire new york data center is crashed and database is gone your data center is gone and what happened to your business all the applications are connected to your production database like you are a retail business sir and all the applications are connected to your production database and your entire production data center is gone your production database is gone your entire business is down so is you want to build your entire data center back that's going to take around one week or like assume that your database is crashed database is went down database is corrupted on the production database production data center and to rebuild that production database is going to take 15 hours 
or 24 hours and your business is down for 24 hours. Your, is your business is willing to wait for 15 hours or 24 hours downtime? Is your business is willing to lose that 24 hours business loss? Right? No, right? Obviously, no. So DR is going to be one of the business continuity plan. The moment your production data center crashes or production database crashes, immediately we have to bring my standby database. This is your production database and this is your standby database. We have to open my standby database and then we have to give it to that end users. Automatically, uh, we are going to coordinate with the application team. We'll point that all the application to my standby database within few minutes or one hour or two hours and my business is back up and running and all the applications are connected to my standby database. I'll open my standby database in read write mode and all the applications are connected to my new primary database here and my business is continuing to run. So how strongly you're going to set up your standby database that decides your business continuity plan. Your recovery point objective, recovery point or time objective, all those things will be decided here. And then we are going to cover here end to end how we are going to build your standby database from the scratch. How we are going to make sure that your primary and standby are in continuous sync. And in case of the sync is broken between primary and standby, how we are going to reestablish that sync. And then you, once your FRA is full, how we are going to handle, deal with that situation. Again, these are common questions in the interview. My FRA is full, how you are going to deal with that situation. Right, so everything will be covered here in the data card architecture. Again, setting up the standby database, various methods. You can various types of your standby database, your physical standby, logical standby, snapshot standby. And then again, there's a various protection modes in your standby database, uh, you know, maximum performance, maximum availability and maximum protection. What are these and what are the various services to in order to achieve this sync? Your MRP, RSP, LNS, log writer, archive writer, all those will be like discussed here and what is the real time apply between my primary and standby all will be like discussed in detail here when it comes to data guard right so that's about data guard what we're going to cover followed by cell scripting right so whatever so far whatever we explained it's all like manual effort so manually as a dba we need to do day in and day out and then is it a good idea to do all these activities on a daily basis. Okay, I can log into my shift. I wanted to make sure that my listener is up, my services are up, my database are up, and my TNS is working fine, my listener is working fine, all the users are able to connect, my database is growing daily and this much, all the table space are having enough space, and then my database table space and data files are having enough space, and all the users are having uh, adequate uh, privileges. Uh, all these checks, is it a make sense to do on a daily basis? Yes, obviously as a DBA, we need to make sure that these all the checks are done on daily basis. How much time we are spending it doing all these checks? One hour every day or two hour every day. So as a DBA, we are just unnecessarily wasting that two hours, right? Instead of doing all these checks manually, we have to write something called cell script. If you are good at cell script, you can write a cell script. If you're good at a Python script, you can write a Python script. If you're good at a Perl script, you can write a Python Perl script. And then put all these daily check commands in one single script and you can just run it, that script. And that's gonna give you a beautiful report and then you can just read through all the report. Then you are done with your daily monitoring activities. Rather than spending two hours daily monitoring task, just single script, run it. And then the moment you run it, within one or two minutes or few minutes, your report is ready. Review that report. And then you're done. Like you don't need to spend two hours. Within five minutes, you are done with all the monitoring activities. You can productively involve this entire two hours to do some research and to the enhancement of your skills, right? So learning cell script, Perl script, or Python script is going to be one of the advantages for DBS to make small, small automations to monitor your listener, monitor your table space, monitor your mount points, monitor your disk group storage, monitor your uh, you know database connections. Uh, all those will be like. Uh, you know, covered here. We'll start with the basic understanding of cell script, writing small, small cell script, and then we'll write one or two uh, monitoring script. And then finally, we'll, uh, I have written one uh, huge monitoring script. I can share with that. I can show a demo on that. Uh, that's how the cell scripting works, right? And then followed by export and import. That's again, logical 
component of my database. We have backups and recoveries, our main backup and restore, but along with that, we have something called export and import. I want to export only logical components, some tables or some schemas from one database to other database. We're gonna use export and import. Uh, we export tables, we export schemas, we export table space, we export data files, and then we'll copy it from one database to other database. And then what are the various scenarios to improve my export and import performance using the parallel threads and using exclude statistics and all those things will be covered everything uh, with this export and import. But, and then we'll be covering like what are the new features in 12C and 19C. Like there's hundreds and thousands of new features, but it is not uh, advised. Like it is left to you whether you are going to read through all those features. But as a DBA, what are the main features that are useful for DBA will be covered over here. Right? And then followed by AWR, ADDM and ASH support. Uh, one of the major aspect of as a DBA to make sure that your database is doing well and your database performance is optimal. So that will be analyzed using AWR report, ADDM report, ASH report. We'll generate these reports and we'll monitor that report and then we'll review that report and then we'll give some recommendation to our developers or the business users. Uh, this is very, very important. My query is running slow. My database is hanging. I am unable to connect to my database. Uh, my query used to take five minutes. Now it's running one hour. And then as a DBA, generating AWR report and checking into AWR report and doing my OS analysis, very, very important aspect of performance tuning. And then checking your execution plan, everything will be covered as part of this uh, uh, performance tuning factors here. And then based upon reports, we're gonna give some recommendation like rebuilding indexes, gather stats, and generating AWR report. And like, you know, your table move, table shrink, and applying some security patches, or like checking your execution plan, whether execution got plan chained or not. And then how I can use the best execution plan, all those will be covered as part of this performance tuning here, right? So that's all about the course curriculum. And then <coughs> at the end of the course, uh, we'll be covering resume writing because that's going to be one of the important aspect of when you're looking for a job change or career uh, opportunities. So we'll be covered with the resume writing and cover writer. So we'll go over my own resume and cover letter and we'll explain and we'll give some uh, preparation tips on that and hints and then you can prepare your own resume and then uh, if you're looking for a job chain, that's gonna be one of the important factor of shortlisting your profile for any new job. So we'll cover that resume and cover letters. And uh, yeah, on- uh, I'm like, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, funny here. Uh, any data masking or encryption uh, sort of uh, concepts are covered in this course? No, again, as I said, right? So those are like uh -huh. advanced topics. So those are subjected to everyone interest. Uh, we have like, you know, the moment we start this course, we have, we'll form a dedicated WhatsApp group. And then in that group, we'll be discussing all this. Like, you know, if everyone are interested uh, in that certain topic, like, you know, everyone are wanted to learn that wallet or encryption, TD yeah. or data masking, if everyone are interested, and then we can take it as an extra topic after this course. Okay, fine, fine. All right. Uh, yeah, and then again, all of these topics regularly discussed with the interview question answers. And at the end of the course also we'll discuss common interview questions and answers, and then followed by mock interview. Again, this mock interview is not mandatory for everyone. It is subjected to everyone interest. If you are interested, you can register, and then I can go ahead and then uh, cover one-to-one -one mock interview for who are interested. Right, uh, that's all about the course content, course curriculum. Uh, anyone has any questions or queries on this? Yeah, is this mock interview uh, an extra chart or a part of this course? No, it is part of this course. You can you can register for multiple times. So you know, I can connect one to one, and then I it's kind of a real time interview. I can just feel like I can start with the uh, asking some questions and answer, and uh, you can explore on that. Like you know, the moment you make any mistake on that, I'm gonna. I'm going to give you some hints on that. I'm going to give you some tips on that after that interview. We're preparing ourselves uh, how to face an interview. Yep, that's correct. Uh, and the coming to resume writing part also, 
Will it be in the part of the course? Yes, yes, that's correct. I'll be okay. going over my own resume, cover letter. Like most of us, we don't know what is cover letter and we'll yes. never send a cover letter. We just send a resume to all the recruiters. But cover letters are very, very important. So I'm going to go over my own cover letter, my own resume. And okay. then uh, I'll going to give you some hints or tips like how you can improve your resume and cover letter. Because resume and cover letters are going to be one of the important, the important factors <laughs> while up yeah, yeah, while applying for any job positions. Because in the market for a single openings, there will be like hundreds of resumes and your recruiters will be like selecting or filtering out those hundreds of resumes and then how strong your resume and cover letter that matters to get shortlisted for that position okay. right uh, uh, right so uh, any questions only uh, the topic that will be uh, covered related to rac uh, rack no, rack is a different uh, separate course will not be covered here. Any part even? Sorry, come again? Like any introductory part, like, like just... Yeah, that, that will be there, yeah. That uh, some of the slides in the PPT, uh, there will be like uh, some of the comparison between the rack. Uh, for example, if I say like each and every, whenever there's a related topics, uh, will be covered as part of this course, introduction and then some of the concept about rack will be covered. But in-depth rack is a separate course. Okay. And uh, will there be uh, any recorded session for sir, after this? Every day sessions will be recorded and uploaded to Google Drive. You can revisit it and you can watch it. And also you can refer the previous batch recordings. All will be available in our Google Drive. So there's no restriction on that. You can watch it, any recorded sessions from the previous batch or this ongoing batch, anything. It's all not time available or uh, certain time it's a lifetime accessible all these course materials all this uh, recorded sessions everything will be like if i go ahead and check on the google drive there will be a lot of uh, materials and there will be a lot of uh, uh, recordings for each day and then you know you can access it lifetime like you know, these are like available forever okay right. Sir, uh, any degree completion holder will be a uh, can do this uh, dba yeah, this is, again, as I said, right, this particular course, whatever we formed, if you see, will be starting with the scratch till the advanced level. And anyone like who wanted to enter into DBA world or start the career into DBA, and this course is best for them. Like Actually, one of my friends uh, completed the uh, BCom graduation. He asking uh, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it is for everyone. Even experts can join, even freshers can join, or uh, even anyone having zero knowledge on database they even they can join because i'll be there to cover end to end from the scratch for especially on this database course uh, yes, uh come again yeah is yes, these course concepts and uh, you know uh, practicals will be based on the multi-tenant architecture yes uh, okay even the term and refresh right, is, uh, right. Yes, I have, I have a question though, but it's it's a technical question. I'm not sure if you can I ask the technical questions. Two technical uh, questions. No, if you have any doubts on the particular course, you can ask. Or other than this course, you can always post me on my WhatsApp or send me an email. I can connect with you one to one. Okay. Okay. So what about that lab sessions? Uh, so. Uh, it like we have to do our own uh, personal like or else any online lab sessions will be uh, it's all will be on your own laptop uh, like you'll be installing it in your own laptop okay. from the sketch whatever i'm doing it you're going to do that one and also uh, there are like ready labs on our google drive if i can go to software or like if i can go to ready labs here um that ready labs standalone ready labs so you can see a lot of uh, labs uploaded here uh, oracle lab one oracle lab two oracle lab three oracle lab two with asm and database and oracle lab two with asm and there's a user guide on that particular lab section here and this oracle lab what it contains uh, you can see this is a mtvm with the host name and guest edition installed and what is oracle lab 
two Oracle Lab three. And what is this Oracle Lab one with database as a Oracle user? It's a ready VM with a 19C database, DVDB installed on that as a file system here. And it's a host name, this is a database name, and this is a Oracle home, it's a ready VM. And if you can go with this ASM and database with Oracle user, and we have a ready VM with a 19C test CDB database, and this is a host name, and these are the disk groups, and then it has an ASM, and it has the database with CDBs and PDB. Uh, you can start the installation from the scratch. We'll be covering beginning of this course. Or if you don't want to do it regularly, you can directly download this particular lab. This is a lab. Uh, this is a lab. Just download it, and you can configure in your laptop. So that's already labs. So all both options are available. Okay, that's yeah. our first point. Like you know, we'll be starting with the installation and the configuration. So you can practice one time installation, configuration, and all. Once you practice it, and then you're going to do all the activities here in case your lab corrupted, your lab crashed, you don't need to do again this installation part. You can just download those labs from the drive. Fine. And uh, can you tell me about that uh, minimum configuration of laptop for this lab? Suppose? The minimum configuration should be 8 GB RAM on your laptop. It's uh, adequate 8 GB is mandatory. And uh, uh, the hard disk is not necessary. Like if you have less un, minimum 100 GB hard disk, that's more than enough. 100 GB hard disk and then the 8 GB RAM. And then if you have more than that, that's well and good. And if you have SSD hard disk, that's well and good. You're gonna do like, it won't work very nice if it's a SSD. If it's not a SSD, then again, 8 GB with 100 GB hard disk will work good. Thank you. All right. Oh, uh, will you be covering the grid upgrade as well? Again, this is a standalone. A grid upgrade we can cover, but standalone doesn't matter. Grid upgrade just a single click. Uh, it's a standalone, right? If grid upgrade is very very important when it comes to rack, but standalone from 12C to 19C, usually you can upgrade grid. I can show you that one. I can cover that one as part of this course. Because this is a standalone, will be covered a single instance, not a rack. So grid upgrade is very challenging when it comes to rack. Right? Again, yeah, we can cover that grid upgrade as part of this upgrade activity here. Let me include that grid upgrade as well here as part of this database upgrade. Uh, Yogesh here. Sir, I just wanted to ask you, means uh, you are starting the rack training also because we also wanted to uh, connect both rack the will, yes, rack, no, uh, I'm coming to that part here. Um, uh, this particular course, this database course is daily two hours and it's a weekdays batch. It will be like weekday batch, 9 a.m. IST to 11 a.m. IST, two hours every day. And then this will be like Monday to Friday. Right, so Saturday, Sunday, no classes for this database. It will be Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. IST to 11 a.m. IST. And course is going to go approximately 40 to 45 days. And if we are covering a lot of extra topics, as I say, like, you know, your wallet, encryption, data masking, and again, this grid upgrade and all, it may go more than 45 days because I'm open to include any extra topics. Again, it is subjected to everyone interest. And then the typical course is planned for 40 to 45 days. And if you're interested in many topics, it may go more than that because I'm ready to help on that topics. That's about class timings, weekdays, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. IST. And then the rack batch, whatever rack batch I'm going to conduct, mostly I'm going to conduct next month, that will be a weekend batch, only on Saturday and Sunday. Because yes, yes, rack yes. is going to be worse than, worse than like database. Each and every concept, if I start it, it's going to take minimum two to three hours. Right. I don't want to cover one hour and then postpone it to tomorrow. Uh, because if I start with the grid infrastructure installation mm -hmm. configuration and all, that will take four hours. I don't want to take one hour today and one hour tomorrow. So I'm going to cover it in one chart. So the rack will be on weekends, Saturday and Sundays, and then that will be like four hours on weekends. I'm going to cover the track in separate chapter. But yeah, uh, this is a weekday batch, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. IST to 11 a.m. IST. This is the course timing. All right. Uh, 
and coming to course fees it will be of uh, 10000 indian rupees uh yeah, in in dollar it may be 135 or 138 uh usd that's a uh, course fees right uh, like if who are like interested are willing to continue with the course uh, we'll be starting uh, these are the two demo classes today and tomorrow 15 and 16 i'm going to take it as a demo classes and then followed by saturday sunday 17 and 18 is a weekend and then regular classes we're going to start it on 19th 19th is a one we're going to start the regular classes so whoever willing to learn or willing to continue this course feel free to ping me on my whatsapp number and then uh, i can continue i can guide you further payment process and all we can start it from the 19th uh, malik uh, tomorrow's demo class also will, would be the same concepts or uh, is it no this different? is done uh, uh. this is one time like you no know, i wanted to cover it uh, now i'm going to talk about some of the basics of uh, database today and then we'll wrap it up for today and tomorrow we're going to go with some of the networking or some of the basics of linux so totally different concept right tomorrow's right. demo right okay. that's correct right. any questions on the course content or the fee structure so the i like the weekdays uh, weekdays only right uh, and weekend also is there right it's a weekdays monday to friday 9 am ist to 11 am ist every day two hours monday to friday no saturday sunday classes saturday sunday classes uh that is for interested one like you know if you are interested or uh, like if you are a new to dba and if you want to learn some basics like pure and pure and basics uh, you don't know anything at all and then i will be connecting with uh, the freshers or the newcomers or who don't know anything about linux we don't know anything about network we don't know anything about database i'll connect with them on saturday uh, evening 7 pm and then i can cover some of the like basics of basics so if you're interested you can join that uh, but otherwise the regular classes regular classes are monday to friday 9 am ist to 11 am ist two hours so, and then sir, who are, uh, one second like who are registered for this course will create a dedicated whatsapp group and will be added to whatsapp group all the communications will happen on that whatsapp group and then uh, every saturday i'm going to ping that zoom link that will be on uh, evening 7 pm to 8 pm and then that will be going to cover a pure basics who don't know anything about linux who don't know anything how to log into linux who don't know how to log how to check the network that will be kind of a pure basics will be covered on every saturday 7 pm to 8 pm that is again subjected if you're interested join otherwise not an issue the all the sessions will be recorded and uploaded and you can watch it yep so you didn't say much about sql tuning are you gonna are we gonna you're gonna do sql tuning too in performance tuning yes that will be covered as part of this so uh, we are totally new to this session sir oh, i just again okay, i said right who are totally new don't worry and every saturday i'll be connecting with all of them and then we'll be covering pure of basics of basics again if you are already experienced and having one year, two year, three year experience, it will not be useful, but it will be totally new for all the newcomers. So I can connect with them on every Saturday and then I'll cover some of the basics, total basics. The installation of Linux and everything. That will be covered as part of this course, installation of Linux and all. But again, on top of this course, uh, the pure basic concept, uh, which are not at all related to database course, like you know related to your linux networking or your windows or like it world like different concept data center and all those things right so that will be like covered to make them to understand this course right so make them to up to speed will be covering on on regular basis with the with the newcomers so do we need to have an sql knowledge uh, that will be that is not required that is not required uh, again uh, I have a, a very beautiful uh, SQL document here, uh, and it's part of this course. You just read it once, you can understand. This is a SQL note. Uh, this note is very, very useful, written by me. And uh, the moment you read once, you'll understand easily. 
so you can just uh, go through all of them of uh, this sir the total cost is, uh, is fully pre- theoretical sir uh total come again total classes is fully theoretical or practical sir it's all practical scenarios i don't believe on theory part because i don't explain uh, i'll just explain the concept i'm not going to go through all the slides i'm not going if you go and see my slides i never uh, uh, written any of the theory parts everything whatever we covered it's all will be like practical and then all the practical labs are attached here you just open the document open the practical uh, uh, commands and just run it right uh, so everything will be like just live demo Uh, will you be covering uh, performance issues like we will be providing sql ids to the yeah that's all will be covered here how to find out a running sql statement how to find out your sql id from the uh, sid and how to find the sid with the sql id and with that sql id how to find your execution plan and then how we can verify whether execution plan got changed or what and then how i can get the sql id from aw report all will be part of performance tuning how you are going to tune your sql how you are going to tune your execution plan how you are going to tune your memory everything will be covered as part of this performance tuning here so if some if someone cannot attend all the all the class so, uh, again as i said uh, every day sessions will be recorded and on the same day uploaded to google drive you can watch it if you are not able to attend and then you can post the questions in our whatsapp group okay can you cover audit and flashback also in database related to database yes yeah, so already noted down you ping me right so already noted down yeah 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 please yeah a lot a lot of questions right like you know people will come back and say that lot of audit files are getting generated lot of trace files are getting generated how to clean up them and how many days i need to keep them so those are best practices and then will be covered each and every topic whenever we talk about that audit file trace files and all and then what are the files we need to clean up on regular basis my huge around mount point is filling because of the audit files because of the trace files because of the alert files and then how i can clear them i can keep it for one week one month and then i can write a small cron tab i can clear the all these files which are older than one week or older than one month all will be like covered here so you're going to show yeah. us all that you're going to show us all that yeah that will be correct will be will be showing all the scripts and then we'll be explaining now it's all purely real time uh, just a may i just mentioned the names here but it will be like much more we are going to cover each and every topic the moment we go on and deeper and deeper of each of these topics uh, we'll be covering these things as well like uh, scheduling backups yeah that will be a cron job so the moment we start about uh, uh, my self scripting and then we'll be explaining first uh, thing is cron tab and then how we are going to schedule a cron tab with the minutes with hours with the daily with the weekly with the monthly and with the yearly we are going to understand the cron tab and then we are going to schedule those cron jobs to monitor my database backups to monitor my or to start my l0 l1 backup and to start my archive log deletion script and then to delete my archive logs or delete my trace files delete my audit files which are older than one month all those things will be covered by scheduling them in the cron tab Right. so again like that that those are like cron tab is not mentioned over here but again that's one of the common activity for dbs so will be covered everything in, in this particular course all right so undo undo logs uh, redo logs again everything will be part of here uh, uh, as i can see here uh, the moment we go on table space and segment and extend so everything will be covered your undo your redo and your system data files sysdoc data files and your system table space sysdoc data files your undo table space and your temp table space temp data files all will be covered over here and if i can go to my slide here uh, like if you can see your table space uh, how the data block how the data is going to store how the table space Uh, everything will be like covered but only thing is we are not going to mention over there like if you see this storage structure concept control file what all control files will come what are data files and what are the different types of data files system sysdocs undo temp redo and what are the online log files what are the archive log files your backup your parameter file sp file p file password file temp and undo and alert and trace uh, we just mentioned but if you see uh, 
if you want a theory part we have a, a theoretical document uploaded into google drive you can go ahead and read it but i'm on fly i'm not going to read the slide i'm just going to show this single slide i'm going to jump onto my server and then i'm going to show okay control file what the importance of that i'm not going to read anything from the slide whatever my teaching slide teaching style is just go on a lab just on explore the concept and make you understand right all right so if no more questions we can jump on to architecture part and we can cover it for today uh, will you be covering the building the standby in different modes like active duplication such things or right right will be covered okay my last question is uh so now we are learning all code database I, I think everything is moving to cloud everything is cloud they say um they probably not need so so much dbs i mean what's your point about that now cloud is always a good uh you know as a dba so it's a time for everyone to learn the cloud and then it left to you which you're going to explore aws azure google or oracle cloud uh at left to you you can plan to learn any one of that because most of the customers that planning to migrate all the workload to cloud uh if you learn it's well and good lot of opportunities if you don't learn and then you may end up with limited opportunities in the market okay i mean what which one would you suggest us to learn like oracle cloud or aws now if you are willing to stay in oracle domain and then better to be stay in oracle cloud because he assuming that i am a oracle certified expert in exadata i am a almost all certificate i'm i'm done with oracle so i'm a cloud expert uh, i'm a oracle cloud certified admin uh, you know i know in and out of oracle cloud uh, i am continue to uh, grow in my oracle domain so if you are willing to explore more more opportunities and you can go with some other clouds aws azure uh, but you have to forget about oracle right like you know if you go to azure and then you have to explore uh, if you go to oracle uh, uh, amazon aws and you have to start learning their databases rds amazon rds and redshift they have their own databases you have to start learning their databases and you have to migrate your skills to their databases right mm-hmm. again sure. any one of the cloud technologies well and good is a dba okay all right uh, any questions on the course and can i give you a call right after the, this zoom i just want to yeah. say something I'll, i'll do that yeah i'll ping me on my I'll call. yeah i would call can i call you yep okay i'll call you thank all you right. all right uh, maliga this is manish this side yep uh, can we have a session on partition on tables whether you will covering this this thing in this course Oh uh, no partitions will not be covered uh probably we can take it as a extra uh, topic okay right because like it is not uh, that important uh, i can show you that partition table how it work or we can query the table but mostly your developers is the one who is going to deal with them mm-hmm. yeah creating a partitions creating a table and all but as a dba doesn't matter it's just a table for me okay okay yeah let's see if everyone interested we can cover that at the end of this course as an extra topic on this okay ma'am all right uh, if no questions i can quickly cover some of the basic stuff and then we can wrap it for today one thing um we all know right like um a database can be installed on windows or can be installed on linux can be installed on different linux flavor x solaris many platform that right. so one thing what i can i can tell assume that this is your um linux server this force is purely based upon the linux we are not going to cover windows it will be purely based upon the linux so this particular laptop if i can say this my laptop physically available here on my desk i can turn it on by 
pressing the power button and then I can connect to my laptop, this particular laptop, whatever I'm using. I can log in with my user ID and password and then I can access it. In the real time industry, all your servers like Linux servers, and then I can say Windows. So your Linux and Windows, all will be somewhere in your data center. It may be, a, this may be your physical server. Physically, they are sitting in your data center. I assume that this is your London data center. So all your servers are in some remote data center. It may be physical or it may be VM. VM on any cloud, your Oracle cloud, or it may be your AWS or Azure or whatever it is, or your vSphere VM cloud, vCenter cloud. Your Linux or Windows server are somewhere in your remote data center, in London data center. Either it may be a physical server or it may be a virtual machine. VM stands for virtual machine. And then if you want to access these servers, one way is go to your data center, turn it on, and then access it. That's not how it works in the real time world, right? Like, you know, we are sitting on a remote data center. We are sitting on the remote places. And then we are going to access these servers remotely. Your, your Linux or your Windows, everything we are going to access remotely. So for the Linux, we have various tools. Uh, one is your putty session or your mobile XTERM or various methods to access your Linux servers. If I can go here, uh, if I can close this one, uh, this is my mobile XTERM, right? I can just simply click on this session here. Mobile XTERM or putty or uh, there are so many other tools in the market. You can use them to connect to your Linux server. Right, so if I can go here and if I can putty or mobile XTERM, you can use a putty or mobile XTERM to connect to your Linux server remotely. Your servers are somewhere in remote, remote data center. You can use mobile XTERM or putty to connect to that remote server. And then you, we have something called um, uh, remote desktop connection for your windows right so in order to connect to windows server we have something called remote desktop connection if i click on here remote so if i say remote desktop connection i can open that it's going to open my uh, this let me clear this up right so i can give my ip address like you know this is the ip address of my London data center, one of the VM or the virtual box or the physical server of Windows IP address, I can connect. And then it's gonna ask for the credential. I'm gonna enter the credential for that. The moment I connect, it's gonna connect to my remote data center database, which is in London data center. So this is the way how we are going to connect your, see, this is like your, uh, Windows Server. If I can go it here, and if I click on this Start button, again same feel. It's just like your remote database, a remote server. You are going to access something called remote desktop connection. That's for your Windows, right? That's a Windows. Any of your Windows servers which are in your data center, you can use something called remote desktop connection, and will connect it. And for the Linux. If you have a Linux servers and your remote data center in your London or whatever the data center you have a physical server or the VM server, if it is a Linux, we have to use something called putty or mobile XTERM. If you can see, I have a putty session here. Let's see. Okay, this is my putty session. I can see putty configuration. Again, I need to give the IP address. And then I can connect to my Linux server. So I can take one of the uh, Linux server, which is in remote data center. Like if I can go here, I can give my IP address and I can connect. And then this the screen S. Yes. And then I can see login as a root user or whatever the username, password you have it. And then you can connect. So you got your Linux access here.
this is like putty session you can use a putty terminal to connect your linux uh, server that's one way or like you can go to your mobile xterm i have mobile xterm here like open a mobile xterm click on this ssh session and give that host ip or the host name whatever there in the remote data center just give that ip address over here and connect and then going to ask you for the login as a username i can give any username right i can connect to my remote data center which is on london or new york so if i can go with a this is like root user the moment you enter the root username password you'll going to connect with the root user if i can go with the same server with the oracle user i can connect with the oracle user and then i can enter the password for oracle user i can connect at the oracle user oracle and the server name if i go to second session here root and then the username and the same server if i can take one more session click on that connect if i have my own user id i can go with my user id i can go with the malik my own user id if i know the password i can connect you, it you must create that uh, user id sir that your linux admin will create your linux admin we as a dba will not be having a root access and this server is somewhere in your remote data center london or your linux is the owner of that he has a full privilege on that he is going to create your own user id on that server for example john or uh, jeff or like you know i can say satish is a user he logged in he joined my organization and then his id your linux admin will create like he will log in with the root user and then he can create something called user add satish or satish right so the user id got created and then he can set the password for that satish user and then your linux admin will create one user id for that satish satish user created and password created and then i can directly connect with the satish with that same server sir for practices what we do sir mm -hmm. sir for practices we don't know any server and anything else no that's how we are going to show right like i'm just giving you a brief basic idea of how in industry how we are going to access the server you can see satish has connected now so yes. for the practices right let's see uh, let's see what i'm going to see some of the basics here now um this is one thing right like if you see my course we are going to start with the software download linux software download and then we are going to install my linux we are going to create one server we are going to create one linux server and then we are going to practice everything on that server that's wow. one thing right so we are going to do that one as part of this course installation of linux server and then we are going to do everything on that linux server that's one thing and the other important factors uh, there are ready labs here like if i see these are your ready labs ready lab 1 ready lab 2 and then you just need to download those ready labs just go ahead and download those ready labs once you download those ready labs and if you can see these are like ready labs once you download it on your local laptop you can just uh, go ahead and then extract here you're going to extract your lab once the lab is extracted we are going to just connect um, i'm going to show you in a minute once this extract is done this is your vm just a brand new vm right the extract is done and we are going to use something called uh, oracle virtual box so this is your oracle virtual box on your laptop you are going to use this oracle virtual box here if you can see right this is oracle virtual box uh, we are just going to add that vm whatever we downloaded here like we downloaded this one we unzipped here we are going to copy that path and i'm just going to add that path here so this is the vm oracle lab one so your vm got created here you just need to start that vm Sir, what is the configuration of your laptop? It is uh, so much smoother. Yeah, this is 
32 GB and 250 SSD hard disk. So minimum you need to go with the 8 GB RAM in order to work on standalone. If you want to work on a rack, go with a minimum 16 GB RAM and go with always SSD. SSDs are much faster so that you can easily uh, work or practice your all the rack, rack to rack. You can configure two node rack, primary two node rack standby if you have a 32 GB RAM. Why it's saying policy Linux. Okay, so I think this is some corruption. We need to set that. Uh, just close this one. I'll just remove this one. And then I can unzip that other lab. I'll just uh, create this folder here. I'll move this one. I can unzip this other lab. I was doing something. Uh, lab one. Okay, let's uh, go here. It's just unzipping uh, the lab. We can go with this one. Yeah, probably uh, this is like how we can configure your labs. So your labs are ready. Once your labs are ready, you can easily connect with the putty session and you can practice all the commands. Let it unzip, I can start, try to start. That other one is like having some corruption, I can fix that one. You can pretty much download these ready labs when you're practicing it and then you can use it on on daily basis. Hello, Malik, can you hear yep. me? Yep. So after setting up the labs every day after shutting down my machine it the it is getting crashed okay so every time if i install the database i am uh, i have to do it again all over again no you have to first, you have to cleanly shut down your uh, uh, vm first before shutting down your laptop can you show me that how to that clean shut down because i shut, shut down the vm first after that i shut down my machine then also that everything is getting crashed and everything database and everything I have to install all over again. Yeah, we need to check that one. Again, this is also a C Linux. So yeah, these two are mm -hmm. like, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, this is like ready labs. I can show you once we start our course, I can show you that. The once you start your VM and you can pretty much access it through your putty session, and then you can practice it out, your installation, configuration, all those things. So that is your first step. Like, you know, we'll be covering very basics, how we can download the software, from where we can download the software, and then how I can install my Linux first, once the Linux installation is done, and then how I can install with my database software and how I can start with the database creation. So that's a part of my course. We're gonna start it on Monday. Uh, and then once you do this, all the practice, this installation from here to here, this all like talks about installation and you can practice one time, two times. And then once you're familiar and then once you are understand about that, and then that's it. Like what you can do, um, you can simply go ahead and then um, uh, practice your all the remaining task. And then while practicing in case your laptop or in case of your VM corrupted, and then it is not starting, no worries. You just delete that VM and you can use this ready VMs, right? So you can ready VMs are already ready with the all the labs and you can just need to download it and unzip it and then connect with your virtual box and then start with the practicing. And especially when you're doing this RMAN restore recoveries, right? Like here, RMAN cloning, RMAN restore and recoveries, in this case, we are going to end up with corrupting my databases or you know uh, my control file getting corrupted, my system data file getting corrupted. So your database will go down. So in that case, if you have a time, you, you can reinstall your database from the sketch. Or if you don't have a time, you don't want to do it again and again, you can directly download with the lab with the database and the Linux and ASM. So you can directly download this and your database is ready back again. So I can again start with the backups and restore and recoveries. Right, so that's uh, 
uh, about the uh, how we are going to use make use of the ready labs and then how we are going to start with the installation and all right uh, we talked about the linux as i said we are going to cover this entire course based upon the linux environment not on the windows uh, this linux we have a various flavors right so the linux isos we have rhl and we have a ubuntu we have a centos and we have a suse so many linux so many linux flavors uh, but are those iso images are readily available those are not readily available only your oracle enterprise linux is readily available if i can talk about that linux iso linux iso means your image copy uh, to boot to install your linux server right we have oel oracle enterprise linux we have rhel red hat enterprise linux <laughs> and we have a suse and we have a cent os and then we have aix and we have a solaris so many flavors in linux uh, if you go ubuntu <laughs> these are like various flavors i can remember as of now uh, many organization have many os versions but if you have this particular iso images you can go ahead and install that if you don't have that iso images uh, we cannot install your linux but one thing is these all are not readily available these are like licensed you have to go to their official websites and you have to download it but for oel for oracle enterprise linux for education purpose you can freely download this of uh, this particular oracle enterprise linux right so if i if i can go to site something called oracle e delivery if i can go to oracle e delivery and you can create your own id with your uh, gmail id like if i can create account you can use your gmail id and you can create your own account i can sign in over here with my gmail id again so not a business purpose you can freely download it for education purpose and then you can use that one so once you log into oracle e delivery you can search for uh, linux or oracle linux or just linux you can see the very first option is your linux and these are the latest version oracle linux 9 8 will be covering as oracle linux 7.9 will be using this oracle 7.9 latest release in oracle series 7 in the 7th release you have 7.1 2 3 4 7.9 is the latest one in 7 series and you can go with the 8 and you can go with the 9 as well so we'll be covering in this particular course 7.9 that's a oracle 7.9 so you can use that one right so you can use this iso image just click on that 7.9 we're going to add it to cart here if you see and continue with that and then you can select platform x86 64 continue and then license agreement continue and then there are a lot of images but very first one is which is of 4.5 gb this is the iso image you can go ahead and download this iso image that's the iso image we are going to use it for the linux installation right so like if i can go here this is already available here i can see okay it's not available here uh, you can download that iso image locally on your laptop this is the one and then you can install your own linux here so if i can show you that one a uh, brand new linux you want to create so for that you can go here and you can create a new and then what name you want to give i can give oracle lab one i can give oracle lab one next how much uh, ram i want to assign for that vm i can give around 8 gb ram for that vm and then i'm going to create as a virtual disk how much 
storage I want to assign it. Dynamic storage. I'm going to assign around 50 GB of storage for that VM, what I'm going to create. Right, so that's done here. And the moment I start, this is a just a configuration. The moment I start, it will ask for that ISO image. Right, so the moment I start this one, it will going to ask me for the ISO image. Where is my ISO image? Select the ISO disk. So we need to download this particular ISO image and then browse that one. I just click over here, add that one, and then wherever you download it, your ISO image, you can browse that this particular ISO image and click open, and then that's gonna open your installation screen. Right? So once it opens, that's gonna start with your Linux installation. Right, so once the Linux installation is done, so you should be able to connect to your Linux server. But again, we can show you uh, from the beginning uh, once we start this course. That is your very first step, right? Very first step is install Linux VM, right? So you have to install your Linux VM. Once the Linux VM is installed, and then you will be able to connect to your VM using this yeah. PuTTY session, right? So once you are able to connect to PuTTY session, once you install your Linux using that ISO image, using this ISO image 7.9, and then you will be able to connect to your PuTTY session once the Linux installation is done. And then once you connect to your VM using that PuTTY session, right? And then uh, I can just say install Linux VM and <coughs> connect on PuTTY session or mobile XTERM. So once you connect, once you install your VM and connect to that position, the next step is install ASM. And the third step is install Oracle Home. That's like install ASM Home, right? And then Oracle Home. And then the fourth step is create database. Right, so once you install your VM, and then once you install VM, you can connect to that VM using PuTTY session, how I connected here. PuTTY session or mobile XTERM, you can connect to that. Once you are inside your VM, you can pretty much install your ASM home, install your Oracle home, and create your database. So create database, we can do it, but first step is we need to install my ASM and Oracle, where I can download those ASM and Oracle software. That's your next step right here. That's your Linux ISO image you can download and install. And the second step is download your Oracle softwares. That's your ASM and Oracle software. Again, on the same site, on your Oracle e-delivery, I can go back here. I can go back again. I can remove all. I don't want this ISO image now. Instead of Oracle Linux, I can search Oracle database. 19C. I can search for Oracle Database 19C. The very first thing, Oracle Database 19C. This is a software. I can just click on that. It's going to add it to cart, continue. And then I'm going to select platform Linux x86 64. You can download it for HP and Microsoft and SolarWinds and all. I'm going to download it for Linux. <coughs> continue. License agreement, continue. And then there are various softwares here. One is your database software. This is your database software. I can just copy this one. I can put it here. This is my database software. All right, if I go back again here. So this is your Oracle database 19.3. And then Oracle client I'm not using right now. We'll discard that one. And then your Oracle grid infrastructure. So this is your grid one. That your grid means ASM one. And right, so this is your grid <coughs> one. So we're going to download this ASM. We're going to download this um, database software. We're going to install these two. Once we install these two, and we're going to create our database. 
right? So the point here is we are going to use Oracle e delivery site, and this is the Oracle e delivery site to download my Linux and to download my ASM and to download my database software. We're going to use the same Oracle e delivery site. Again, guys, these are like freely available software for educational purpose or for the testing. You are not supposed to use for business use, right? So you can make use of them and then you can practice it, right? And then we're going to create the database. Once this Oracle ASM home and Oracle home is done, we can go down and create a databases. And that will be covered again as part of course, once we start the regular course, we're gonna start with the uh, Linux installation and then we're gonna install my database software with the various methods, GY mode, silent mode and all those things. If I can go here, the installation method, where is that one? Okay, this is a slide, the installation type. We're going to install standalone database versus rack. We're going to install various method. If you're going to install with ASM, we'll go with the ASM disk groups and we're going to install ASM. We're going to install Oracle Home. We're going to create a database. And if you're going to install OS file system, <clears throat> we're going to use this path. We're going to use OEY or the silent method. So we're going to follow this path. We're going to cover this slide once we start the installation, in, or once we start our actual course. What are the different methods? What's the difference between file system or your raw file system or OCFS or your ASM? And what exactly this rack architecture works here? So rack is a totally different part, will not be covered here. But pretty much we're gonna cover this entire thing here, various methods of inclusion or the types. Right, so that's uh, that's how we set up a lab. Yeah. Once the lab is ready. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Come again, sorry. Okay, yeah. So once the lab is ready and rest all is going to be our further courses, uh, you know, administration, day-to-day -day activities and other stuffs. Uh, okay, and then I'm gonna quickly bring up something called uh, uh, Excel file here. Uh, this is the Excel file, if you see, uh, these are like not needed as of now. I'm just gonna edit, okay. Uh, we're gonna pretty much use three labs. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, we're gonna use, you're gonna, you're gonna assign whatever IP you want. It's not mandatory, you can assign whatever IP you want. We're gonna create Oracle Lab 1, one VM server. We're gonna install Oracle Lab 2, other VM server. We're gonna install third VM server, Oracle Lab 3. We're gonna use the three VMs. On the VM 1, we're going to create multiple databases, DevDB, DevCDB, TestDB, and Dev and Test. We're going to create multiple databases on lab one. On lab two, we're going to install ASM. This is all like standalone. Your file system is going to be local storage. And on the lab two, we're going to install ASM. We're going to create a CDB database, and then we're going to connect some CDBs and PDBs. Here with ASM and CDBs and PDBs, we're going to install ASM software. We're going to install my database software and we're going to create a storage, uh, OCR data and Rico. We're going to create our database inside my ASM storage here on my lab two. On my lab one, we're going to create it on the file system storage and we're going to create a various databases. And then we're going to use the different, different approaches like you know your database upgrade here. And also we're going to create one or two database here and then we're gonna upgrade that database. Uh, and then again, on the lab three, we're going to clone this, whatever the this database or test TDB. We'll take a backup of these databases and then we'll go into Oracle lab three and we're gonna use the admin restore, recover, admin clone. Uh, the various steps, we're gonna use the various labs um, and the pretty much we're going to use Oracle lab two and Oracle lab one for the most of the activities. Right, and then these are the lab we're gonna use here and then, like when we start about ARM and backup and recovery, we're gonna use lab three. When you come about upgrades, we're gonna use lab two and lab three. When we start about ASM architecture and all those things, we're gonna start uh, Oracle lab two. These are like different, different labs we're going to build and we're going to use it. And if you can go here, if you see, you have this Oracle lab one, Oracle lab two and Oracle lab three. You can download them and you can use the same thing. 
right so like a lab one with the database and with the sm or like a lab two with the sm and uh, with the database um, all those things we can be used in this particular course right so that's a high level uh, how we are going to set up the lab and we are going to make use of uh, this course right uh, any questions on this so far right hi, hi, hi malik yep yeah oh, what is this actually uh, asm uh, grid infrastructure what is actually okay uh, again it will be covered as part of this course but let's uh, quickly uh, give you a difference um, yeah i can simply close all these connections here uh, let close this let close this okay i'll connect one more session what is as yeah again uh, i can cover it part of our course but i can give you a brief idea here what is asm asm stands for automatic storage management uh, this is my oracle lab sorry uh okay so guys go on a mute if you're not talking uh, it will be like disturbing for others All right uh this is my oracle lab 2 and then this is my oracle lab 1 so if i do ps if any of grep smon uh these are like various databases are running here on lab 1 and then if i do on same thing on my lab 2 and again here various databases were running but if you see there's something called plus asm is running here what exactly asm or asm stands for automatic storage management i'll give you an example um, i'll connect to oracle user here and then i can connect to one of the database devdb right i'm going to connect to my database using this command sql plus class as dba we're going to connect to my sql that's connected to my devdb i'm going to run this dot vrinv that is kind of a environmental variable i'm going to set it i'm going to set it to my database called devdb i'm going to use sql plus ssdb it going to connect to my devdb database it going to connect to my devdb database and here i'm going to run select name from v dollar data file the moment i run v dollar data file if you see all these data files for my database system sysox undo and user all these data files are coming from my os file system right if i can exit and if i can go to this location this is location if i can go here do ls and ltr i can see all these files here these are the files we're going to talk about as part of architecture these are called data files where the actual data and metadata is going to store all these files are going to reside under os file system and whereas coming to this asm once you install this asm that stand for automatic storage management and then i'm going to set to my database here dot space or inv i'm going to set it to test cdb and i'm going to connect to that database i'm going to run the same command whatever i ran here select name from with other database so if you see all these data files for this database test cdb all are coming from plus data what is that plus data plus data is called a disk group which is provided by my asm storage right so these are the disk group so if i wanted to if i want to go into that location to check this file system sysox undo it's not a os file system if i try to go into that it will not work so for that we need to go into asm i am going to set it to asm and then i'm need to go into something called asm cmd if i go inside that ls and i can see my data here ls hyphen l i can see my data here if i can go Why into data the plus what what plus the plus data plus data indicates your asm disk group so if i can see hyphen p if you use hyphen p here we're going to go into asm cmd plus indicates that's your asm storage and this is the data if i can go 
So if you see, it's a plus data. PWD, it's a plus data. LSFNL again. And then this is your test CDB. If I can go here, plus data, test CDB. And you can go inside test CDB. Uh, uh, when you do the LS, why well, didn't I see it at the top? When you do LS after you log in to the ESMs. Mm -hmm. Why didn't I see? Why did they say plus data? No, that doesn't matter whether it's a plus data or not. With the moment you use uh, ASM CMD, you don't see that path. You don't see okay. that path. The moment you use hyphen P, you're going to see that plus path and all. So it doesn't matter whether you use a plus or not. This always plus is default. So and then if I can go into my data files and if I do LS hyphen L, I can see same system sysox undo. Whatever the data files I'm seeing here, system sysox undo. All those data files, I can see it over here. So this is the storage feasibility provided by your ASM. So I can give how about, you- how, how, how about those numbers I see at the end of the name of the file? These are your called ASM numbering. The moment any file you create, ASM will assign these numbers. We're gonna talk oh. about once we start our ASM architecture. So this is what it works here. ASM, when you talk about ASM architecture, uh, if you see different software stack here, you have a database one and you have a database two and you have operating system here. And if I can correlate operating system, this is my Oracle lab two. I can say this is my Oracle lab two. My operating system, this is my Oracle lab two. And if I can go, this is my Oracle lab one. I can put it here, right? So this is my operating system, operating system, operating system. This is my Oracle lab one and this is my Oracle lab two. Here I have ASM installation and here I don't have ASM installation. And I created database here and I created database here. So these two databases, the data files, the actual data is going to reside under ASM. And for these two databases here, there's no ASM. Actual database data files are going to reside under OS file system, right? So your ASM will give you the storage feasibility for your database. And Oracle will strongly recommend always use ASM as a storage for your database because this database accessing the data is going to be much more faster when you use ASM. For this database accessing the data, it has to go to OS file system and read the data and then access the data. So it will be like your slower IOs. Always Oracle recommends to use ASM for your database storage. Right, that's a simple understanding. I hope that clears. How about the logic of volume manager? Again, in order to manage this file system, your mm -hmm. operating system has your logical volume manager. Like who will manage your file system here? You say you have your data files here. These are the data files which are physically available on your OS storage. Who is going to manage them? Your logical value manager, which belongs to your operating system. Okay. But when you install your ASM, ASM will manage all your data files, right? So we're going to reduce the logical value manager and file system cost here, and ASM will provide that logical value manager and file system feature. Right, so that's a quick uh, difference between ASM and storage, right? And it came out of the topic, uh, fine. Anyway, uh, I hope that's clear. Uh, like, uh, you, you said something about these uh, commands and all, what is it about? Uh, you, you said very faster, so I could not get it. Yeah, again, uh, we'll be covered um, the moment we start our uh, course. Uh, for example, right, um, I logged into my Oracle user here. And if I do PS F and EF, uh, PS process list SMON. Again, SMON is again, it's one of the background process. My database will be covered as part of architecture. We have these many databases running here on this particular server. We have these many databases are running here. I want to connect to my DevDB. How I can connect to my DevDB? DevDB? Right, I can. These are the database names. Okay. Like you can create multiple databases. Again, this will be covered as part of uh, uh, our database course. Uh, it's a very basic beginning now. So if I can explain them, it will be like confusing. Uh, where is that architecture part? Do I have that one? Okay. The, the simple concept, right, like here, how many databases I can install in a server? 
like you can see this is my oracle lab one and i have how many databases dev db dev test dev cdb test db right multiples there is no restriction everything will be like discussed once we start our course but the point is once you log in i want to connect to a particular database i want to connect to dev db how i can connect i can use something called dart what, space what, what I mean. env and then i can just give that uh, database name yeah. and then i can connect to sql plus as sdba yeah. and then it's going to connect to sql i can say select name from v dollar database so these are commands will be get to know once we start our course because we are going to use these commands regularly and then you will become familiar on that right so are you are you using same oracle home or a different oracle home for every database that again yeah. depends uh, we can create it on the same oracle home we can install different different oracle home again will that at this point doesn't matter we'll discuss it when our regular classes you can start a multiple databases on a single oracle home or you can have multiple oracle home for each databases Right, this is one way. Like you know, now you connected to Dev. I want to connect to Dev DB now. Again, same thing. You have to run the same command. Or I envy. It's going to ask you which SID instance ID you want to connect. I need to give that instance ID, the database name. The moment I connect, I can use SQL plus slash as this DBA, and I'm going to connect to SQL. Again, I'm going to run the select name from Vida database. It's going to give you which database you connected. right so yeah these are the commands will be explored more once we start our our course it is all about creating um, databases right right creating the databases that will be covered here chapter number uh, uh yeah here installing your oracle home and creating your databases how many database you are going to create you can create you can create dev db dev test whatever name you can provide you can give you can give malik as a name whatever name you can provide that will be covered here creating your databases and creating your database different databases we are going to create with the different different methods all right so why we are creating multiple databases because i wanted to show you this installation method create your database here using oui and create your database using silent method here and create your database with a silent method and create your database with the asm Oh, uh, because of that, we are going to create multiple databases just for practice, right? Uh, yeah. Once you are familiar with that, and then you can use any one database is more than enough for the further lab, further day-to-day -day activities, whatever we are going to cover. One database is more than enough. But for the installation practice, you can try with a different different approach. As per the slide, you can use a OUI with the GUI mode, with the silent mode, with the ASM, and with the silent mode, and all those things. all right uh, yeah that's a uh, pretty much uh, uh, probably i can stop it here for now or uh, if uh, anyone has any questions or queries we can take it up otherwise we can stop it for today and then tomorrow we can cover few more concept called basics of linux um, and then basics of uh, networking um, how i can check the host name how i change the host name how i can get the ip addresses how i change the ip address what is the dhcp what is the static ip address all those thing networking aspects we cover tomorrow but yeah any questions so far for this course so, rack also including in this course no rack is not included in this course rack is a separate course but as i discussed in the earlier we can cover some of the basics of rack as and when required but rack will not be covered here. like i am a very beginner and i have very less uh, computer knowledge and uh, uh, you know um, i am actually a slow learner uh, like um, will you will you means um, yeah definitely like uh, very quickly or uh, any like yeah definitely i can go in a slow phase for the slow learner uh, i can take some extra sessions for them who are like very beginners and then i can make them up to the speed when before we start into the class right Okay. Uh, i'll make sure that each and every day you will understand the topics if you don't understand and then i can spend around 30 minutes or like 40 minutes on the same day and then i can clarify all your concepts whatever covered on that day right okay. so yeah I, i understand because like i got a very feedback from previous batch 
and i used to manage that you know cover uh, you know connect with them one to one or like group of four five people okay after then, means you know, after 11 o'clock it means 9 to 11 are the classes any right? any time yeah, after the daily classes and if you missed out or if you lost in that no, only this uh, timing 9 to 11 or any other uh, uh, timing no this is the only uh, timing only this is the only timing yes mm-hmm. okay Right. Sir, after the end of the session, uh, like I am also new, but uh, coming to age grade, yeah, uh, if I need to put any experience, uh-huh. uh huh. So how far I can uh, use this training, and uh, how far I I can be benefited uh, in keeping any experience? Can no, I this... manage the interviews? No, this particular database course pretty much. like whoever once you complete this course you can pretty much you are eligible to handle like from 3 to 4 years of experience a dba okay. whatever he do in day to day activities everything will be covered here and once you cross 4 years and very less opportunity you have to learn rack the moment okay. you become 5 years 6 years 8 years of experience 5 to 8 years then the expectation is more you have to learn rack so up to 4 right. years this is very fitable right yeah up to 4 year you can put it in your resume because we'll be covering end to end of arm and backup restore recoveries our asm uh, concept understanding and data guards and your patching and upgradations up to 4 years as a dba whatever needed everything will be covered here so what is rack means sir rack is a real application cluster so just to give you some idea um like for example a, using multiple servers multiple database database servers right no, so this is for also for instance okay this is your stand alone and this is your rack and then this is your lab 1 and then this is your lab 1 lab 2 and then lab 3 um and then you created a database here dev db dev and then here what happens you are going to create a something called dev here on the shared storage dev db you are going to create here and then this storage will be attached to all the servers and then if the application user connected to your database here he is connected to stand alone database on the lab one and if this particular lab goes down lab one server your vm goes down your database will not be accessible all the end users are not be able to accessible and in case of rack rac real application cluster you have a three linux box 4 5 6 you can have n number of linux servers you are going to create a called dev db on the shared storage and then which will be attached to all the servers and you are going to have a instance one here and you are going to have instance two here and you are going to have instance three here these instances are connected to your database here and then some users can connect to instance one and some user can connect to instance two some user connect to instance 3 and this particular lab one goes down your instance one will go down automatically these users can connect to your instance 2 or instance 3 that's your rack real application cluster the failover tolerance one server goes down you have other servers to survive that incoming connections that's your rack data guard also same concept no data guard is not a same concept so data guard what happens right so data guard you have one server here and then you have uh i can say in a server somewhere else Remote. yeah you have one more server here and i can say this is your lab 1 and then this is your lab 2 and then this is your new york and then this is your london so you have your prod database here and then users are connected the moment the user do some transactions here some transaction insert update delete create some table the moment they do it and then all the data will be replicated to your data guard that's on your london so this is your standby this is your primary and this is your standby whatever the transaction the end users are connected to your primary they will do all the transactions all the transactions will be replicated to your standby your standby is always sync with your primary in case of your primary crashes or primary database goes down you have a standby database you are going to open the standby database you will request all the user to connect to your standby database that's your data guard disaster scenario all right so uh, 
after completion of course any job reference will be available from your side any no job guarantee will not be there but uh, at the end reference there is any opening yeah that will be there like you know if there is any opening in my circle i'll be posting it across the students or across the group so once we done with uh, with this course uh, can we apply um as a experienced consultants or a fresh as a like, as a yeah you can pretty much 3 to 4 years you can yeah, you can you know handle okay. any any job with a 3 to 4 years after this course okay. all right uh, any more questions before we wind up no all right guys uh Sir, can you upload this session because uh, at the last half an hour i missed i was in other call actually okay definitely we'll do that one all right guys uh, let's stop it here today uh, we'll connect tomorrow and we'll discuss few more basics of linux networking and any other further questions queries we'll, we'll take care of that in tomorrow's class all right sir uh, where, where have you uploaded uh, this session uh yeah it is only for the registered student uh, they will yes. be having access but uh, uh, for the non registered student i can provide you the link you can ping me on my whatsapp i uh, know for me uh, if i want to I'll, I'll i'll ping you in our group uh, okay. in our group i can ping you yeah for the all the registered student we can ping we'll discuss on the group all right guys thank you see you tomorrow Yeah, it's a nice session, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. I'll call you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, Malik.